My name is Brad Huddleston. Today I'm going to show you how to use DFT to generate an energy volume curve. An energy volume curve is one of the pieces of information that we use to calibrate an atomistic potential. So it is used fairly often in the context of Integrated Computational Materials Engineering, or ICME. You can learn more about ICME on this website icme.hpc.msstate.edu. We will also be getting several of the scripts that we need to run today's tutorial from this website. So first of all, during this demonstration I am going to be using Quantum Espresso. You can also use VASP, as I will show you in a minute, but in either case, if you need to know how to run either of those codes, you can see my intro videos to each of them. In the Check the description below for the links. Alright, first let's find the script, the main script that we need to generate an energy volume curve. Let's just search this website for EV curve. That'll take us here. This is the script that we're going to use. So you can see it gives us the purpose. Uh, it also gives us the usage for it. And then it gives us the source. So as I mentioned, you can use this version if you are going to use VASP. Or scroll down and you can use this version if you're going to use Quantum Espresso. In either case, I should note that both of these only work on Linux right now. If you want to use uh, Windows, you'll have to convert one of these to the Windows Shell script uh, language. Alright, so we're going to copy this one as we're going to use Quantum Espresso. And we are, we are going to create a new text file and paste it in. And we can just save that in a folder where we want to do the calculations. And I'm going to save it right here. So you can see that my text editor recognizes it as a bash script. Alright, so let's look at the top here. It gives us the usage for it, which we'll get back to. It also gives us a couple other scripts that we're going to need to run Quantum Espresso. We are only going to run one of these structures, just FCC, but we'll still need this input file made for Quantum Espresso. So from my earlier video on Quantum Espresso, or from the ICME website on the Quantum Espresso code page, you can find an input file. It will look something like this. We need to rename this so that it has this name so that the script will be able to find it. So let's save this as fcc.ev.in. Now, this Quantum Espresso script will control our material and all the other parameters about how we will calculate uh, the EV curve. So, first thing, let's make sure that we have the uh, potential for the material that we want. So you can see here I have specified this copper potential and I have this copper potential in the folder where I'm going to be running these simulations. So you'll want to pick a potential and a material and have that also in, a, in the same uh, folder. I've also specified this to be an FCC lattice, which is good since that matches the name. One thing you do not need to worry about is this lattice parameter here. That lattice parameter will be replaced by the EV curve script so that it will iterate through all these lattice parameters that we want to calculate the energy of. Alright, so it looks like our input script is complete now. Okay, let's keep going down and see how this, this EV curve script works. So first, you see it tries to remove the old files. So if we run this for the first time, this, this line will actually fail, but not to worry. Um, this is just to make sure that you don't have any of these old files there because the new stuff will only be appended to the old files and that'll get really confusing. So just to be safe we make sure that those files don't exist. 
then you can see here it actually sets up a range of points to check the energy add. And it does that by doing an 80% of your guess and 120% of your guess. And your guess is specified uh, when you run the EV curve script. And you can, you can edit these ranges if you want to do a wider range or a narrower range. It also sets the number of points. So it takes this and sets the step size by dividing it by the number. We're actually going to reduce this because we only want to do a few points for this video. Then you can see here it iterates in a for loop through all the points that we've told it to create. For each point it converts the lattice parameter into atomic units. So that's a good point to bring up. When we input this guess, we need to make sure that this is an angstroms. Quantum Espresso runs on atomic units, but that conversion will happen on inside. So just make sure that this, this guess is in angstroms. All right, so you see it chooses the input file based on the structure that we've told it, and then it changes the lattice parameter to the new value in that input file. Then it runs Quantum Espresso. Then it parses the output files to get the energy and the volume. And it puts those in two different files, an E versus A, which is energy versus lattice parameter, and E versus V, which is energy versus volume. Once it's done all the points, it runs this EV fit routine. This EV fit routine is actually a way for us to fit our energy versus lattice parameter data to an equation of state. We're going to have to get this EV fit routine from the ICME website again. So back here on the ICME website, over in the search bar you can just search for EV fit. And it'll bring you right to the code page for EV fit. You can see this is actually Fortran code, so we'll have to, to compile this, but we can copy all of this code and copy that. And then we can use this command here to compile it. So we'll go over here, we'll save this as evfit.f and then in a terminal we'll go over to that folder and we'll compile it gfortran 02 evfit.f and we're going to call the uh, executable just evfit you can see it gives us a bunch of warnings but it compiled correctly so we if we look at it we see that we have an evfit executable now all right so that's good so what this will this evfit routine will give us is the bulk modulus um, a fitted a lattice constant from from the data and an equilibrium energy per atom all right, one last thing to do before we are able to run our EV curve script, we need to make sure that we give our EV curve script uh, executable privileges. So we're going to chmod plus x on EV curve. That way it is seen as an executable as well. Now we can just run it. Looking back at the usage to get the, uh, the options, and we're going to run an FCC one as we said, and we're going to guess the lattice parameter of copper, and we'll say it's about 3.6. And then hit enter. So you see it can't actually remove these the first time because they don't exist, but then it'll iterate through the lattice parameters that we've told it to, to create. And there you are. So here it's iterated through those last parameters, and then here it starts EV fit routine, and all of these inputs tell it what to do here. So it's running the equation of state number four, and it fits it, and it creates the output. 
you can actually run the EV fit routine again if you want to try a different equation of state. For example, just type in EV fit like that, and we have an FCC unit cell. Let's try the Birch one. And our input file is E versus A. And we'll put the output in evfit.1. Done. All right, let's see what the what is in that evfit.1. So you can see here, it tells us the equation of state we used, a first order Birch equation of state. And then it gives us the equilibrium lattice constant, the bulk modulus in kilobar, a couple of the fitting parameters that it used, and the minimum energy per atom. And with that, that's how you calculate an energy volume curve using DFT.